When designers and engineers using Autodesk Inventor need to create a metal frame, they'll frequently draw out the shape of the profile and extrude it, or use the standard metal shapes from the content center. A far more powerful option exists in the design accelerators by using the Insert Frame tool and the editing tools that result from placing a metal frame. I'll begin by starting the Insert Frame and taking a look at the options available. First, I'll choose the standard, of which there are a number of options. With my standard chosen, I can choose a family. Again, a large option that's all based on standards. I'll choose my square tube. Then, I'll choose the size that I want to use, which in this case runs from 2x2x8 two by two by inch all the way up to 16x16 16 16 with a 5 8 inch thick wall so a very broad variety of options to choose from. With my size chosen, I can override the material, I can change the appearance, and I can also choose how the material will be oriented upon initial placement. By default, it's in the center with no offset and no rotation. However, I can select any corner, change my offsets, and build from there. For placement options, I can choose a single member, or I can pick two points. Let's take a look at how this works. First I'll select a single edge, then I'll reposition my model so I can find an edge or a sketch to choose. I'll take a look at the orientation and see it's not what I was hoping for. That's the placement that I need. So I'll select apply. When I do, it will give me the name of the frame member which I can change since this is the first selection, it will also be establishing a skeleton whose name I can change. In this case, I'll just select OK to place it. It will reflect what the name of that component will be and where it will go, and I'll press OK. Now I can see my frame member placed into my assembly. I'll select other locations and update their position, adding them as I go. In another exercise, you will see how to take components that are essentially the same component with multiple instances and reuse frame members in a way that will make the bill of materials the most logical. I'll apply my last vertical, and now just as an example, I'll take a look at the two-point placement. I can place a component based on any two points. So for example, if I wanted a brace to run all the way across, I could select those two points. I don't want that, so I'll cancel out, but what's most important is that any change to the skeleton, in this case it's a bounding box, so we can use 3D geometry or 2D geometry, but any change to it will update the frame associatively. I like to insert another type of frame member, staying in the ANSI standard. This time I'll go down to find an L with equal length angles. I'll again use a 2 by 2 by 1 8 I'm going to want to base on this back corner with a single selection and it will give me a preview of the frame that's going to be placed. This is very close to what I want, but what I need is for it to be offset. I'll try that direction and then I'll update to use this direction. That gives me the placement that I want. I'll again place my frame member I'll change its angle, change the offset, and update until I get what I want. Now I'll use the two points placement to place the last two members using this shape. This one goes into the correct location, so I'll apply it. I also have the option to no longer prompt for a name, so I'll take advantage of that as I lock in the location for my remaining members. Now I want to add another style, so even though I've just hit apply, I can go back and make modifications to the shape that I want to use. So I'll go back to a rectangular tube 
I'll go to a 2 by one by one eighth, and I'll go back to a single selection option. And here, as I place these shapes, I'll take advantage of the fact that I can overlap these shapes and clean them up later. By not having to pre-plan everything exactly, but being able to work through the process of applying my steel members to my frame, I can very quickly build this in without having to set up construction planes or having to predefine other ways of working. Now I've laid in all the various members of my frame into place. If I want, I can go back to my source part, turn off its visibility so I can get a better look at what my frame looks like before it's edited into its final state.